So I just got back from watching the Blair Witch, um, which is, as you know, the sequel to the Blair Witch Project, not to be confused with the Bear Bitch Project. No witches are gonna burn in my woods, ladies. Oh, thank you, kind sir. How can we repay you for saving our lives? Oh, I got a couple of ideas. Oh, my, you're a naughty lumberjack. Hey, hold it. Um. So this is kind of a first impression slash review. It's a lot sloppier than the uh, stuff I was planning on doing. Um, so here it is, because um, I felt obligated to do a video or else my channel would be uh, dead. Um, so this movie, I, I didn't come in with very high expectations, um, mostly because I'm not a big fan of uh, shaky cam films, uh, I find them annoying, because uh, a lot of them tend to be the same thing, uh, a group goes, does shit, they don't believe it, shit happens, camera shakes all over the fucking place, I get disoriented, and then loud stuff happens, people are like, what the fuck, and then the movie ends with an abrupt cut. It's been the same with every movie post Blair Witch Project, and um, I, I like the Blair Witch Project. Um, it, it's it, people gotta remember that it's not the first shaky cam film. Uh, the first real big one was Cannibal Holocaust, but the Blair Witch Project kind of set a trend for it. Um, and ever since then, a lot of movies like Paranormal Activity, VHS have been following that kind of trend, and, um, I was, I was pleasantly surprised with this film, I can say, um, it, it's not perfect, it has problems, uh, and I don't think it's as good as the first movie in terms of atmosphere, but there are things that it does, uh, well. Um, so I'm gonna go into the story a bit. So, the story takes place, I wanna say, 20 years after the first movie, and, the main character is, finds footage of what seems to be his sister that is still alive in the weird house that was at the um, end of the first film. And basically they go over um, some of the story of the first film. They, they actually bring up a lot of the lore that was in the first film, and I kind of have a problem with this. I mean, it, it, it's kind of a double-edged sword in this one, because I, I always liked the lore in the first movie and the way it was told. And they definitely bring the lore back with the whole, uh, the colonial era and the hermit and whatnot. I always thought that was, kind of brought the movie, um, a sense of realism in a sense. Um, sense of realism in a sense. Um, but in this one, instead of, like, going from different townsfolk, um, which would bring different snippets of the story, like, um, like, here and there, that would kind of contradict one another, like, oh, I heard it was this, but no, I heard it was this, so, which, the first movie did well, because it was, like, a documentary, and this movie kind of presents itself as a documentary at first, which they, uh, they never bring up again, they, they mention it at first, and then it just kind of abandoned after that, um, I wasn't expecting them to do that again, but they do bring up the lore, and the way they do it is not as good as the first movie, I gotta say, they, uh, Basically, someone just explains what was just going on in the first movie in, um, what's it called? Uh, by long periods of exposition, um, just explaining all the cool, mysterious snippets and just, like, long bouts of dialogue that when they would see something like, oh, it was, uh, it was this, uh, 200 years ago, blank, blank, went to blank, um, and... It's cool that they paid attention to the story of the first movie, uh, and I, I bet you they watched the fake documentary that came with the bonus disc, which I thought added to it a lot, but the way they presented that was kind of annoying. Um, not annoying, just not good. Um, the first half of this film, in, not the first half, first third, was kind of iffy, like, it, it feels like a very typical shaky can film, and, um, 
it gets better, surprisingly. Um, when the later half comes in, when they're actually further into the forest, uh, when it starts to get dark, that's that's when things actually kind of get good. And in fact, it gets in some ways it does things better um, than the first movie. Um, the atmosphere, although the first movie had a more creepy one, this one has a really surprisingly oppressive atmosphere. Um, it pulls a lot of twists that the first one didn't do that I really liked. Um, you'll see when two characters return uh, after being gone for a while, it's uh, it's pretty shocking. Uh, I, I liked it. Um, it, it, it has a very interesting story. It, it leads to places, but uh, slight spoiler, it, the ending is kind of eh, like... I wasn't expecting many answers or anything, but I feel like they should have explained a bit more. We we know less. I mean, we know just the same about the Blair Witch as we did in the first movie. We don't know any more. We don't know any less. Um, and if I had to give props to the Paranormal Activity series, which I'm not a big fan of, is that with each movie, kind of learned a bit more about what was going on. In this movie, we know that shit can get shit can go down a hell of harder, but, um, we, we don't know as, uh, as much. Um, one of the interesting features of the film is that there are many different cameras. Instead of, like, the two or three that they brought in in the first movie, there are many different camera formats. You go from HD cameras to drone cameras, even, to the old kind of shittio I brought, like, the old kind of tapes that they use. And um, that's what I'm filming this on, actually, like an old shittio EHS, um, just to give it that extra flair. Ooh. Um, and, and I thought that was cool how they switched out every now and then. Um, they did it in the first movie, and they, they did it to a, a good effect here. Um, another thing I didn't like about the film, though, was the amount of jump scares in this film. And they weren't like well placed. I, I think jump scares have their place in horror films. I mean, I don't find, I, I find them kind of cheap, but uh, the way they do it in this movie just kind of felt, it felt so 2000s, like 2010s that it kind of hurt, where it's not subtle, it's just like loud noise accompany, uh, accompanies these jump scares. Like, it's like bang, and it's just like, oh. It's, it's kind of annoying, but when they do set up an atmosphere, they do it really well. Um, there's this one camera, I uh, there's this one part I like where they're really close on to like someone's face, right? Um, and you're just you know something is gonna happen, you know it, but uh, and they stay on this kind of shot for a while, but nothing does happen, and it, it's such a it, that actually brought a lot of tension to the screen, which I, I thought if the movie had more more moments like that, or more moments like the original with the sounds, and don't get me wrong, they do do a lot of sounds, but a lot of the sound, like sound work, is for jump scares, which was kind of annoying. Um, the acting in the film, um, kind of a mixed bag. In the first movie, if you didn't know, the director never really told them what he was gonna do to like scare them so a lot of the scares were genuine but in this film I mean they're, they're good actors when it comes to being scared but it kind of lost that genuine feeling to it um what's it called I will say this they are a lot less annoying in the later half of the film uh unlike the first movie because I, I mean you're gonna be screaming and getting angry and shit when you're lost in the forest. That's, I mean, that's bad. You're you're always gonna do that, especially if you're like a, a teen, uh, college student and whatnot. You're gonna you're gonna get annoying, basically, and it's not very fun to watch. But it adds to the realism, I guess. And in this movie, they do do that, but they don't do it to such an annoying extent where they throw out the fucking map. Um, which I, if I had one, if I had a big problem with the Blair Witch Project, it was that fucking scene. I threw away the map. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> I kicked the... 
I'm sorry, it's fucked up. It's fucked up, but I, I kicked that fucking map into the creek yesterday. <laughs> it was useless. I kicked that fucker into the creek. <laughs> Which kind of broke the realism in a sense um, in the first movie. But overall, uh, the acting was fairly decent. Um, I, I might be contradicting myself in this fucking review a bunch of times. This is, there's no script to this. It's just a bunch of me just kind of giving my first impressions. Um, as stated, the later half of the film is a lot better than the first half. Uh, in terms of just weirdness, this movie gets really fucking weird at points. Um, to the point where I was thinking, like, is there fucking aliens? Because um, it, it kind of... There are certain parts where that's almost believable, um, especially in the last bit in the house. They they go back to the house um, that was revealed in the trailers at the very end, and all of a sudden, the house just lights up on the outside with just a bunch of bright lights. They're like, oh, fuck, aliens. And, you know, it could have it could have done that. Which, I mean, it's batshit insane, it's weird, but I feel like if it went with aliens, it would have still been better than the ending that we got, which was just um, them dropping the camera, and then it fucking ends, just like in the first movie. And where in that movie I thought it worked, in this one it just kind of felt like a cop-out, like, we don't know how to end this film, so we're just going to end it like the first movie. Whereas the other one kind of just brought this weird tension and creepiness to it, because it revolved around the story. In this one, it's just like, oh, it just ends, and you just kind of walk away, kind of disappointed. But that later half of the film, it, like, the two-thirds of the film are really, really good, um, except for the very beginning bit, which is kind of annoying when they introduce the characters. It's the same old kind of beginning to every shaky cam film. Um, and then you just get... You just get the kind of same opening, but it does branch out a bit, and it it, it kind of takes into its own. So, I, I did like this film. It's it's not very um, it's not as good as the first one, um, in terms of atmosphere. But it I like it. I, I thought it was a a decent film. Um, should you check it out in the theater? Um, maybe I don't know. Um, if you're willing to pay 10 bucks to go to a theater, I mean, go ahead, it's, it, 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 can, it has moments, it, it can be pretty spooky at times, um, but overall, I'd say it's like, a, it's, a, it's a rental or something, I, I would rent it, um, yeah, uh, so that was my kind of first impression of the review, I mean, first impression of the Blair Witch, um, I, I think I liked it more than a, a lot of people, um, because I have, I try to go in with, like, mental expectations, and I was surprised. Um, and yeah, so hopefully you got over all the uhs and yes, and enjoyed this review thingy. Um, I'm Devin, and good luck.